Hi everyone, welcome back to Sticks and Stones Carvings. I'm Kevin, and today uh, we're gonna make another wood spirit here on this piece of wood that was graciously sent to me from Jordy Johnson from over there at Carbon Fusion. And today I'm gonna make another wizard. What I do is I took my chainsaw out and I shaped it, okay? Uh, it's pretty flat on the back. So it'll be nice and easy to do. And uh, we did the same thing. You know, I made a wedge shape. And now I got a nice little hat shaped it up to a point, all right? And we can carve a nice little face down here and uh, hopefully move it for some fairly decent money if we can do a decent job on it. Uh, the same exact thing that we did with, let me show you that other wizard. This right here is the wizard we did uh, the other day. Remember I roughed him out in the last video? Just by shaping a little piece of wood okay that we cut out of a cedar log i don't know how good you can see that it's kind of bright but uh he's not too fancy he was pretty simple we took about 20 25 minutes i think and we're going to do something on the idea of this and we're going to make it in a really nice piece of wood instead of this really light cedar i'll probably stain him and paint him a little bit and uh we'll end up making another guy something like this okay so with all that said, get your chainsaw out, shape a piece of wood into a wedge. I showed uh, how to do that in the last video. We'll draw some basic details on here, and let me see if I can give you another tip or two and how to carve some quick eyes and a quick little wizard that you can move for a couple of bucks and hopefully start a little hobby. Okay, here we go. Now the center of this guy, all right, is a little bit off because the piece of wood, uh, what I had to work with from this tiny piece, it was high over here, but I wanted to get more of a, a wider piece. So I have kind of had to cut it like this. The thing is, this is the high spot here and it's kind of off center and I would like that high spot in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my center line about where I wanna put that. Oh, it's windy out here today. You guys can't see that too good, but what I'm doing is this is the high spot. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to make sure that I stay on the center line here, which is about here, right? And that way, you know, I won't be carving over here and the face will be going off the off the wood. So even though this is where I would like to carve it, I'm gonna have to start the face here and just use whatever wood I have to try and, you know, get my wizard in, okay? because we want to keep everything symmetrical. So that's all right. We'll just have to take that down and make the center the high spot where I put that center line. And I like to start these with a little bit of a swooping hat. So we're just gonna bring this down. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Don't mind my drawing on the wood here. Something like that. All right, just to start this wizard off. And of course the hat I'll shape down a little bit nicer and everything on the sides once I get the basic details cut in. Now I do have this piece right here in my jaw horse, okay? For those of you that are looking to pick up a jaw horse, you can check out my Amazon store in the links below if you want something like this. But a lot of people are always asking me about my setup. And the way I like to set up outside is I like my Dremel to be pretty much mobile so I can move it from one side to the next wherever I need to. And let me show you how I really accomplish that uh it's pretty basic and simple but it works for me and you guys can modify it any way you want i'm just going to show you the most simple thing that that i do anyway this right here is a cedar post all right it's about four foot high and what all i do this is an old one that i use uh it's always on the other side to see that nail i just put a nail in at an angle like that and i hang my dremel on it okay now with this sometimes i'll put it right here I'll lean it up against my jaw horse. I can clamp it to my jaw horse, hang my Dremel off it. I like it to the right side of my Dremel a lot of times, or uh, of my piece. So a lot of times I'll just bring it right over here and I'll lean it up against here and I'll clamp it. Or I can just sit it on the ground and it stays long enough. You know, if you, you want to anchor it, I have an actual little thing on the side that I, I actually put the post in and it stays where I want it. But the idea is I can pull it out. I can move it over here on the side if I want to lean it up against here, clamp it, and my Dremel's right there, all right? And it's real easy. I can just run an extension cord to my Dremel on its outside and boom, okay? So that's pretty much all I do there as far as carving outside goes, 
right? So it's a nice, simple little trick. You guys might want to try that. You just hang your Dremel on it, and you're good to go. I have my other one all set up. And what I have in that one is my sanding drum. Let me put this down. I am using a Dremel 4000 today. This right here, I have a sanding drum. What I'm going to do is show you that if you don't have a lot of bits, you can use the sanding drum to get a lot of these features and rough this thing out. Right now, I'm just going to cut the hat out with it, and let me show you how that works. Using the tip of the sanding drum, the sea edge, right? Okay, and I already have my hat cut in, or at least the shape. Now, I can use this to carve this whole piece if I really want to, but I'd have to hold it in my hand so I could turn the piece and everything. But you can carve with this, guys. So if you don't have a lot of fancy bits, but you have soft wood like this cedar here or basswood, the sanding drum will work for you. You just got to kind of acquire a feel for it. But I've made many carvings with just this, okay? And then you can detail it up with some smaller bits or hand tools, whatever you like. But... If you're at a loss for carving and you think you can't do it, get your Dremel. Most of them come with a sanding drum and a, an attachment, the mandrel, all right? And, or you could just go to the store and buy them. You know, uh, you could buy it one at a time or you could buy the mandrel and buy the drums themselves in packs, okay? This right here is a 60 grit, all right? I recommend at least 60 grit if you're going to try and rough things out, all right? And they go up to, you know, 120 and there's all different grits but the the lower the grit the more coarse it is and that's good for roughing out things like this okay boy i got a mess here in the tent today the weather's getting nice time to start cleaning up out here and giving myself a little bit more room just trying to utilize some of this wood that's laying around now you see how that sanding drum actually really does clean up nice uh look at how nice it made that wood all right and this is good wood by the way like i said this is a western red cedar Again, it's from my friend Jordy Johnson over there. He, uh, Jordy had just had his channel hacked, and I can't say that enough on my channel. He lost a really awesome car carving channel. All right, he had lots of subscribers. Uh, he's very inventive. He'll call himself a hack, but don't listen to him. He's a lot more knowledgeable than he uh, gives himself credit for. And if you haven't seen Jordy and you haven't subscribed to his channel or you don't know about him, all right, or even if you do and you didn't know about his channel, go over to his new channel. It's called Beginner Wood Carving Fusion. Okay, go over there, check him out, subscribe. I'll try and uh, mention it on my channel all the time because he's got a big heart. He's very, very knowledgeable. He'll give you all kinds of wacky and crazy ideas, and it's a fun channel to watch. So we're going to build his channel up for him again. Hopefully, we'll help him out. Uh, he'll build it himself, but as much as I can mention it, I'm going to mention it in all my videos because it was a shame what happened to his channel. So he's the one that sent me this wood, guys, okay? So definitely make sure you go over there and you check Jordy out. And uh, I hope I said the name right. If not, I'll correct it. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to try and put some basic dimensions on this wizard. And I'll try to stay out of the camera as much as I can because I know I have a bad habit of putting my noodle in here. <laughs> but I'm just going to come down a little bit. I'm going to draw a line straight across just like this. Okay. And that right there is going to be where we carve the eye channel. And I'm still going to use the sanding drum for this right now. And I'll show you a little trick we can do to try and get some decent eyes in this guy. So we're going to take our time today and we're going to try and make a decent wood spirit on this piece of cedar here. So here we go. See, so that's all I did there. 
I ran the sanding drum across and cut that channel in, right? And that's going to be his eye bridge, right? Let me see if I can blow this up a little. Off the camera a little, so as we start carving, we have a close-up for you guys. Okay, I'm trying to make this easy for everybody. So I'm using the sanding drum in this one today as much as possible because everybody who does have a Dremel could actually use the sanding drum and do this, okay? As long as you shape out your, your wood spirit first, all right? Like I said, you can use a chainsaw, even a grinder with a cuts all disc, a uh, four and a half inch grinder. You could shape your wood first, come up with the piece, and then use your sanding drum, all right? Even if you don't shape the wood, I'd use the sanding drum just on sticks, just the way they are, all right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our piece again, and we're just going to draw two lines where about we want to put the nose here. So we're going to keep it pretty large, all right, for this guy. So I'm just going to draw like that. And what I'm going to do is keep it a little skinnier at the top, and as it comes down, you know, we're going to take wood out on the sides over here but i'm going to make this one pretty large and we're going to do it with the sanding drum all right and once we get it to that point then we'll take the wood out over here also all right and let me show you how we do that with the sanding drum instead of taking it and carving like this with it all right i'm going to turn it this way and i'm going to take the wood out by pulling straight down just like that all right let me show you how that works to get that wood out from the sides and make that nose start standing out okay here we go all right but that's how easy that is we we'll take more wood out on the bottom all i'm doing is getting the shape all right, so now we have our nose set in. Now, I didn't go really deep, not yet. All right, because we're just trying to get our basic space where we want the nose to be, right? There's plenty of other ways we could take this out. But if you put your sanding drum in there and you just pull down like that, that's a nice, easy way to get that wood off the sides. And we're going to open up spots here for the eyes and everything else. Okay. Okay, I was a little bit in the way of the camera there in the last uh, segment when I did this. So I'm going to do a little bit more and show you guys how I did that by pulling the drum down. Because we have a lot to go on this nose yet. We still want to take this down pretty deep. All right. And I'm going to show you a little trick uh, how we can do eyes kind of more on a flat surface. All right. To get the eyes a little bit easier for you guys to do with a couple of simple tips and tricks. But first, let's uh, get this nose to cut out a little bit more. Take your drum and pull it, put it in here and pull straight down to take the wood out on the side. Just like that, okay? Now if you notice, I'm not going all the way down. I don't want to cut the whole nose out here. about halfway Because what I want to do is I want to leave some here because we definitely want to put the wings of his nose in, all right? And it's going to be easier to get eyes, all right, uh, if we only come down about halfway. What I'm talking about there, where's my marker, is if we would come down about to here, all right, then take this out in here, all right, but try and leave down here. All right, that way you have plenty of wood yet for that nose, and then you won't be taking too much off. Like I said, carving deeper is always a good idea, but sometimes right in the beginning, we want to leave a little bit, so we don't want to carve too deep yet. Down here, we'll save the carving deeper part for afterwards. All right, right now, carve deep as you want right in here and get this in, all right, to get that nose to stand out. Because what we're going to do is a little trick to make these eyes... And we're going to try and get the eyes more up here. 
All right, on a flat surface today. And let me show you how I'm gonna, what I'm talking about here is we're gonna try and round this off and get eyes in this a different way that I haven't shown you guys yet, all right? So I'm gonna take my sanding drum after I glue those. I'm gonna blend all that in just like that. Okay. Now pull them down. like that. And now we have some nice open area here where we can actually start carving eyes and i know you're thinking how are you going to get eyebrows and all that in there don't worry trust the process for now all right but this right here is why i'm leaving wood on the sides because we want this kind of flat under here all right and the eyes are going to be up in here and it's going to be easier for us to form eye mounds if we can get some of this up here flat and then we can run some tools through there and get our eyes in a lot easier. And it will be a lot easier to get the little corners out and everything because you're carving more on a flat surface, which is easier to round off than trying to make a big hole here in uh, the way I was showing you in other videos, All right? So hopefully this will give you some new ideas. So don't worry about what it looks like at the moment. Pull down here, but again, leave some wood right here. Pull down here, leave some wood here because we still got a lot of nose to do. Okay, now we're going to start using our other bits and we're going to start shaping this nose out a little bit more. We're going to clean this up a little so I'm not in the camera. And then we're going to move on. Okay, now that we have this out, okay, and it's more flat up in here, it's easier to draw on it and it's easier to show you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about. What we're going to do... Is we're gonna draw our eyelids in and we're gonna carve them right up into this flat surface here all right so I'm just making two lines like that then we're gonna take this one and do the same thing on the bottom okay now since this is flatter we could take a bit we've got to find the right bit right you could use a v-tool now this is western red cedar so it might chip out if i use a v-tool i might try it first and i would run my v-tool if this is basswood right across those lines and cut them out all right and i would even extend them down here and just let them go off off the side Right, where you could have your crow's feet and all that right off of that. I'll show you guys this doing it with a knife also. But let's see uh, if we can find a Dremel bit since we're using the Dremel to cut those lines in and get our eyelids going. Okay, now the bit I'm going to choose for this, I'm trying to keep this video so everybody can do it. Okay, even though this is not on the beginner channel, it's still a good beginner tip if you've never done power carving. All right, uh, we used a sanding drum to get this far. All right, the next bit I'm going to use is a nice cheap bit that anyone can find. All right, you don't have to go and have a fancy cuts all disc or uh, cuts all bit or a saber tooth bit. This right here is just a very cheap, I don't know if, uh, can you see that? It's a diamond bit. And this one's kind of pointy. I don't know if that camera's focusing. 
my eyes sure aren't but it's a pointed diamond bit all right these are pretty cheap you can get them all over the place you could buy them at a hardware store in packs you can go on amazon and find them pretty cheap and this right here is an eighth inch shank fits right in your flex shaft i'll tell you right now this diamond bit will cut right through this red cedar because it's soft wood and i'm going to use that since it's pointy and skinny to cut these eyebrows in if i can keep it from traveling on me too much it's got a nice little point on it let's see how it works Works pretty good, right? I'm going to try and clean that up underneath it a little. And we have... We have our top set of eyelids cut in there. Okay, that diamond bit bit worked pretty good. All right, I'm going to try and do that on the other side. And hopefully not a get in the way of the camera here. It might turn a little bit, that's okay. Trying to use two hands and not be able to rotate the wood, but that worked fine. Uh, you can also use a cone shaped bit for this. All right, it's just a little hard. Uh, I'm trying to squat down behind the camera and keep my big noodle out of the camera. But that right there is one bit you can use, you can find in any hardware store, nice and easy to do. And our eyelids are cut in there. Now I'm gonna dig in a little bit more with my knife and everything when I get off camera later on, uh, I'll be able to clean those up. But at least now we have our eyes started by having an upper part of the upper lid and the lower part of the upper lid, okay? And when we come back to doing these eyes, I'll show you how to finish those off and make them really nice, right? But those are all carved on a flat surface. Now it'll be easy to take the corners out and you'll have nice two little balls there that we can pop some quick guys in and it'd be nice and easy for us. Boy, it's windy out here today. Okay, we're going to start drawing our nose on. I wanted to do that first because when I do this nose, I want to make sure I have enough room for the eyes. So I didn't want to start my nose quite yet. Now I'm going to switch bits. And I'm going to go to my saber tooth so I can rough this out. So let me change that and I'll be back. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to set the width of our nose real quick. So I'm just going to put a line about how wide I want it. I'm going to angle it up just a little bit like this. Okay, and we're going to take those pieces out. By making a cut like that and a cut like that. We're going to make a V cut here. And I'm going to use the tip of a pointed bit here for this. Now, you could still use your sanding drum. You could still use your diamond bit if you don't have a saber tooth. All right. This right here is a saber tooth bit. This is the green one. It's a coarse one. And I'm going to use that probably to start roughing out the rest of this carving. But let me take these pieces out and then we'll draw our nose in. And we'll make sure we have plenty of room, like I said, to blend everything together. Take a little more out under the nose. One. A little hard at this angle. Give me a sec. And two. Okay. So now that nose is really starting to stand out on the bottom. The more wood we take out from underneath it, and the more over here in the corners.
rounding it over as we go. And that's all we're doing there. And that'll set the width of the nose in. Now we can draw our wings in and put those where we want. And we have a nice nose started, okay? All leaving room up here so we can do our eyes and our nostrils won't be in the way and taking too much out, okay? You guys see that, all right? Okay, moving on. All right, before I like to do the wings of my nose, I like to set the nostrils in here so That'll give me an idea about where I want to put the wings, all right, and the whole entire uh, shape of the nose, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tip of my bit here, and I'm just going to draw two holes with my bit. I'm going to punch them in, and then wherever they fall, that will make me decide where to put the wings of his nose. So here we go. <laughs> And there's two, now I'll round his nose off just a little bit. Okay, now I have an idea of where I can put those wings and his nostrils are set in, right? And now I can draw the wings of his nose in. Uh, so I like to do that first because I like to keep the septum here in the middle, right? And sometimes you can carve that out by mistake. Now I can figure out where I want to put the wing which would be coming around like this, all right? Just like that, and we'll have those smile lines come off of that wing and coming down like this. So let's cut that in, and we'll try to blend it all together here. At an angle. You want to set that into the face. You don't want to go straight in. Go at an angle. All right. When you get down here, get deep. Leave a little piece right there so you can actually have that nose blend in on that side. And then we're going to just pull that down just like that and blend that together. Leaving a nice deep shadow in there. If I can get it on this side here. Take your time. Don't take too much out. Make sure you're carving at an angle. I'm pointing my bit that way. All right. Not going too deep right here yet. Definitely going deep when I get down here. Right there. And then we're going to pull it to the side. Deep in there. Kind of round this over a little bit. And then you round the whole mouth over. Or the barrel of the mouth anyway. And we have a nice little nose in there that we can start shaping a little bit better. We have plenty of room to finish the eyes off up here. And we didn't get the nostrils way up here too high, so that messes up our eye. Okay, good. Let's move on. All right. I cleaned up a little bit of the marker line right here. And the nose is all cut out. It's time to start drawing our mustache in. Figure out what kind of mustache we want to give this guy. I like the wizards to have a big long one. You can make any one you want. All right. So I'm just going to kind of do something like this for this guy. Coming right down that smile line there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Try to make it a little symmetrical anyway. 
keep them about the same length or whatever and give it a little bit of movement so it's just not a straight down mustache and then over here we're going to cut the sides of the face in so we're going to draw a line here and then over here i'm going to draw another one all right we'll probably end up giving him cheeks like this and we'll keep him pretty basic pretty easy not much if you're a beginner all right when you were following along you can always rewind that and that's what we're going to end up with and we're going to cut that in all we're going to do is trace our lines guys here we go Once you do that, we're going to cut underneath it, relieve some of that wood. Same over here. leaving all that wood out from underneath it to make that mustache stand out. Okay, now we're going to go around the outside of the mustache here. Then we're going to tuck that up and under. Shaving all that marker line off, right? Round those edges over. You don't want any sharp edges. Just a light touch. And make sure it's deep enough to get some shadow in there. Undercut it a little. Let's go to about a pointed bit in these flame shaped bits. You can get up and underneath that mustache pretty good and other places so you get some shadow. Let's cut this hairline in and these cheeks. Make it pretty deep to frame that face in. Shave here just a little bit. When I come over to the corner here, I'm going to take some wood out. Right there. Extend these. Take a little wood out right here. I'm going to put one dent there. And one dent there. And we're going to put those cheeks inside. And flatten them out just a little bit, like that. Shave down to that little line we cut. So the cheek goes down inside there. 
I'm going to try and get some of that wood out from underneath this eye while I'm here with the tip of this bit. Lightly shave my marker line off there. And the same over here, try to get that marker line off. Where do we have that? Sure, I keep that line we cut in with the diamond bit. So I'm just reinforcing that with the point of this bit. We could have used this bit to do those too. Okay. Now, if you guys are following along, you should be able to make a wizard like this pretty easy. All right, I'm going to move the camera here just a little bit, if I can. I think that's as far as I can get it to go. But as you can see, he's starting to shape up fairly good. All right. And we can shape his hat however we want. And now we've got most of our rough parts cut in. I'm going to have to clean up down here and get this whole thing clean wood like this. Which is what I would want. Because if you can see the bottom there. So we still have a big chunk of wood there. He's standing up right now. Uh, if I can move this out a little. I can move it out. But then I'm going to be in front of the camera in my car. So I'll move the camera back. But you can see... We're starting to shape a pretty nice wizard here, right? His nose is going to still be going back and up and under, and we'll dig that in even more and put it between his eyebrows uh, with some smaller bits. But this right here is, I think, going to be a good tutorial for beginners also. It's a step-by-step, -step, and if you follow it, I'm hoping you guys will be able to make a decent wizard. I'm going to take my bit, and I'm going to dig up underneath this hat now. I want to get some really good shadow there, so I might as well just keep taping here. And what I'm going to do is move the camera again so you can see that. And it's closer so I'm not in the way because I really need to be able to be behind it when I do this. So here we go with that. Okay, now that right there is all about getting shadows, which is what carving is all about. And that's where my buddy Jordy would say, carve deeper, all right? And that is definitely when you want to start carving deeper. When you start adding your shadows and you have everything where you need it and you left enough wood to make all your features first, 
Now we got them in there. Now we can start carving deeper and make him look really awesome because he's going to have shadows underneath that hat, for instance, over here by the sides to set that face in around the mustache and underneath it. And then we'll clean this bottom part off here and we'll put that wood in or the, the beard hair in and we'll start working on his eyes. And it should look pretty good. Okay. Okay, what I did was I took my chainsaw and I just shaved lightly, all right, and got the rest of that bark off in the bottom because I still have him thick on the bottom. So I'm going to make him so he could possibly stand up, but he's probably going to be a wall hanger. He's a pretty decent sized uh, wood spirit wizard also, all right. Now I could do all this with the chainsaw, but we're going to continue working with the Dremel and the saber tooth for this. But I did use the chainsaw to get this off, so just so you know, but I could take the chainsaw and do all the beard hair in this guy right now but i really don't feel like having oil all over it and everything else i just wanted to show you guys what i did okay and how i did it uh i'm zoomed out pretty good here i'm gonna take the dremel we're gonna continue just i'm gonna use two hands and you know i'd rather hold it in my hand and i'd be a lot more accurate but I'll show you guys that we're just gonna get some beard hair all the way around this guy and then we'll go up and we'll finish his eyes but for now I'm gonna get the Dremel out and we're just gonna cut all this beard hair in with our saber tooth bit. So here we go. Right there, I'm gonna go right around the back of the carbon to get this hair to stand out. Underneath it. Break it up in random spots, make him look a little more interesting all around. And I will have to move the vise so I can actually pick him up, hold him in my hand, and go all the way around him. But you get the idea. Right here, I'm going to take this sheet down. With some light cuts because I want to make that wing of the nose stand out on that side more. Okay. Now I'll have to turn that in my vice so I can get it on the other side. That's what we're coming up with here. I'm just going around randomly putting hair in. I'm going to split the eyebrows right here. I'm going to get that nose to go up and underneath him a little bit more. that off
Because we do not want any sharp, sharp edges there. We'll clean all that up even with a diamond bit if we have to later on. I'm going to make sure that we got our eyebrow lines, or eyelid lines, I mean, still cut in here. Okay. Give a couple of, to the mustache, couple lines here. Not going to give them too many. Now I'll go around and I'll undercut a lot of these and I'll take the sharp edges off. I will probably give him just a little bit of a lip by running across here. That isn't going to be much. Let me see if I can zoom in to show you that. That's going to be a real quick, just, he doesn't even really need one, but we'll give him one. And that right there is pretty much uh, going to be all we need for that. All right. So I'll clean him up off camera and show you how everything blends together. And then we'll come up and we'll finish his eyes. And we got ourselves a nice little wizard. Okay. Okay, I got all the beard hair. <coughs> Excuse me, get all the beard hair in. It's kind of windy out here. I don't know if you guys can hear me on the video with the wind blowing. So I'm going to go inside to finish this guy up. And we're going to do his eyes. Uh, let's see if I can get him out. But that right there is pretty much what we're coming up here. And I'm going to go inside and we'll quick do his eyes and get some eyelashes on him. And a little bit of detail. And we'll have ourselves a nice little wizard. Okay, let's go do that. Okay, I brought him back inside, and this is what he looks like. Okay, so you guys can see. Uh, get him that way. Anyway, we're going to blow it up here a little bit, and we're going to try and get these eyes in. And now that we cut the eye, eyebrow up top, or the eyelid, uh, yeah, I could talk. The eyelid on the top and on the bottom with our Dremel. We're going to try and take the hand tools and get a little chip out. Right here, I'm going to make a V-cut with my knife, just like that. And we're going to try and pop a chip out in that corner there, all right? <clears throat> Leaving a little shadow like that. But you see how once you do this eyelid, all right, when you make it that round, all right, just taking a chip out here and a chip out here, is going to be enough to really round that eyeball off. So I'm going to come over here on this side. I'm going to figure out about where I want it. I'm going to push in right underneath that eyelid. Push in there. So 
so I have a nice little V, all right? Make sure that's about the size I want, yep. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to take this chip out. Well, let's do it this way. Just from corner to corner there, okay? So, V cut. Make sure it's in there pretty good and try to pop that chip out, okay? Almost out. <laughs> there we go. And that's all it's going to take to round, whoops, that's all it's going to take to round that eyeball off. Okay. See how it's nice and round already? All right. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And then we'll, all we have to do is take, we'll do one here. I'm going to take myself a nice little gouge that's got a good little sweep on it. I'm going to offset the eye. Now I can round this off a little bit more if I want with my knife first. All right. Clean it up, make it as nice as I want it before doing this. All right, and once you do that, find yourself a nice little uh, veiner or gouge. Push it in. Make sure you go under that eyelid. Pull it out. Pop that chip out with your knife and you have an eyeball. Okay? So that's how easy it is if you do the eyes the way we did them, right? To come up with a, a decent eye anyway, right? And then we can round all that off and put some detail under here with our Dremel afterwards or hand tools, okay? So I'm going to do the other side here. See if uh, we can get that to do the same. I'm going to make my V cut. And I'll do that, you know, a couple of times. Okay, make that V cut and try to get that chip to pop out. Now I have shadow on that side. Now it's a matter of coming over here and doing the same thing. Just let me put a mark there with the first one. All right. And we make a V cut here, okay? And once we have that cut in, Take that chip out. Now that eyeball's starting to round off, right? I might need a little bit of work to round it off a little bit more to get it to look like the other one. That's no biggie. You just shape it accordingly, all right? And try and get it to round off. But uh, if you have done the steps we did with the Dremel, it'll be a lot easier for you to have two mounds there for your eye okay and then you put your other pupil in and you're golden let me just get this a little bit rounder okay now i'll take my little gotta make sure i find the same banger i'm gonna come over here Find a spot, push it in, pop it out, and he's got two eyes, okay? And that's how easy that's going to be. Now, underneath there, to finish him off, uh, like I said, this is Western Red Cedar. This may chip if I use hand tools on it. I'm going to try my big, big V tool here. And I'm just going to run a line to try and clean that up. If not, we can use that diamond bit again that we did with our Dremel. Okay. But we'll clean that up with the diamond bit later. So I'd make the bottom lid just by cutting that in a little bit. Just like that. Okay, and we have our eyes, right? And again, uh, underneath, now I'll clean this up with the diamond bit underneath there. You know, I really don't like using the hand tools that much on this Western Red Cedar because it's very chippy when you go cross grain, see that? And that's even with sharp tools. But I would give him a bag or two, a couple of uh, crow's feet over here on the side. And I would do eyebrows. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do to uh, 
detail this guy up, all right? And then once we sand him, all right, and I put all the little detail that I want, if he doesn't uh, sand up well enough or he's a little chippy because I tried to use hand tools on him, I'll just get the Dremel out and I'll do the same thing, all right? So, let me take him outside and show you what he looks like where I have a little bit more room. I'll put a little detail on him and he's done, guys. Okay, guys, so this is what I ended up with. This right here is the wizard we made, all right? And like I say, he's, he's flat on the back, all right? And he's that of a piece of wood that wasn't really that big. And uh, he's gonna need some sanding and some cleaning up and stuff. And I gave him a couple of wrinkles and some eyebrow lines. I might have to clean him up a little bit with the Dremel because like I said, the hand tools are probably gonna chip him out. So I'll sand him up, maybe put a finish on him and uh, he'll be ready to be for sale. I'll drill a hole in the back and we've got a nice little wall hanging wizard. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope uh, I gave you some tips. Try them out, let me know how they work. And hopefully it was explained slowly enough that uh, most of you should be able to make a nice little wizard now. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure, again, that you subscribe to Beginner Wood Carving Fusion. Go over there and check out Jordy. His channel was hacked, if you haven't learned that yet. And that's his new channel. So definitely go over there. He's starting back up. And I'm sure he's going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. Definitely worth the subscribe over there. He's got lots of fun ideas, and it should be a fun summer. So, and by the way, Jordy, if you are watching, thanks for the cedar. This is what I make with them. Thanks again, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye now. Ooh.